In this example here, we have R134A entering into an air compressor at inlet one. We have the pressure, temperature, and volumetric flow rate, and then exiting at exit two, and we have a pressure and temperature given in the problem statement. We're also told that we have work on a per unit mass basis, so 60 kilojoules per kilogram is the work here. And then we're actually going to be looking for the heat transfer in kilowatts. Let's start by applying the first law of thermodynamics over this compressor, which is just the energy balance equation, which just states that zero equals the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate times the enthalpies coming in minus the enthalpies coming out. So we'll have the m dot one equals m dot two in this case, which is going to be equal to m dot. So I'll just have m dot times h one minus h two. Again, remember conservation of mass, m.1 must equal m.2. Now, if we had two different exits, things would be a little bit different, but because we only have one inlet and one exit, we have m.1 equals m.2. So instead of having the uh, distributive property of applying this m. Dot to h1 and h2, I'll just factor it out. So now if you try to fill in what's given to us, we'll have that zero equals the heat transfer, which we're obviously looking for. So we'll leave that as q dot minus the power. So remember that power which is just w dot equals the work which is just w times the mass flow rate m dot in this case we actually have the uh, work per unit mass which would be just be w over m so to find our power we're going to have to find our mass flow rate so our mass flow rate if you recall is just equal to our volumetric flow rate v dot divided by the specific volume now, because the volumetric flow rate is not conserved like the mass flow rate, we have to isolate that we're using V dot one, and therefore we're using the specific volume at one as well. Now, that being said, M dot one still equals M dot two because that's mass. So to solve for the mass flow rate here, we're obviously going to need the specific volume. So at inlet one, we have four bar and 20 degrees Celsius. So let's turn to table A11 and see where we are on the property table. So if you turn over to four bar, you have a saturation temperature of 8.93 Celsius. We were at 20 degrees Celsius, so we're in the superheated region. So if we turn to table A12, go to four bar and 20 degrees Celsius, you'll have your specific volume as 0 0.05397 cubic meters per kilogram. So we'll have the volumetric flow rate of four cubic meters per minute divided by 0 0.05. 397, which we just pulled from the property table, that'd be m3 per kilogram. Now the meters cubed would cancel out and you'll be left with the unit in kilograms per minute. And if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have 74.1152 kilograms per minute. So if you just divide this by 60 to get into kilograms per second, you'll have 1.2353 kilograms per second. So that's your mass flow rate. So now we can solve for our power. So we'll have that W dot equals our work, which is 60 kilojoules per kilogram times mass flow rate of 1.2353 kilograms per second. Kilograms and kilograms will cancel out. You'll have kilojoules per second, which is a kilowatt. And your power will equal 74.118 kilowatts. Now, before I forget, you should make this a negative number because compressors actually consume power, so you'll have a negative power here. So now let's go ahead and add that to our expression. So we have minus a negative 74.118 kilowatts plus our mass flow rate. So we had 1.2353 kilograms per second times, and I'm going to have to move it down here. I apologize times the change in enthalpy. So at P1 of four bar and 20 C, we have to turn to our properties table. And at four bar and 20 C, we have a specific enthalpy of 262.96 kilojoules per kilogram. And then we need to subtract H2. So at two, we have 12 bar and 80 C. So if we go to the saturated table at 12 bar and 80 C, or sorry, at 12 bar, we have 46 C. And we're at 80 C in the problem statement. So we have to turn over to table A12. And at four, 12 bar, sorry, 12 bar and ADC, we have 310.24 kilojoules per kilogram. And once you have that, you can cancel out the kilograms and kilograms, and you'll have kilojoules per second, which is in fact a kilowatt. And now you can successfully add your heat transfer power and um, change in enthalpies because you have the specific unit of kilowatt across the board now. So now you'll have the, the uh, heat transfer, Q dot equals 
negative 15.71 kilowatts. And because it's a negative number, you know that that heat transfer is actually exiting the system.